an insect killing bat. The typical sort of thing, these are very common, this one came out of Poundland and it's just basically, it's got a button on the handle, when you push the button, little red LED lights and it applies high voltage across the metal grid. And the first ones of these had, you, by the way, you'll notice I'm using a metal screwdriver and not getting a shock, it's because the high voltage is uh, basically between the two layers of the grid, it's not referenced to ground, which means I can safely poke this with a screwdriver until something goes horribly wrong and I do get an electric shock. If I poked it with my finger, I would get a nasty sort of zap off that. Now, the first ones, uh, which I uh, did manage to poke myself, poke myself, that's not really the correct terminology, poke my finger into on more than one occasion, uh, they were a lot simpler than this. They were, I suppose they decided they were unsafe. It was just simply alternate um, poles run across the way. And, and now I'm thinking of it, it may actually be easier for them to keep the separation and to manufacture using this technique because um, basically speaking, they've got two outer meshes uh, connected to one pole and it looks like just little crimps that have been, uh, eyelets that have been crimped into the actual circular mesh. And this case, case is a little... Um, well, I'm not even sure what you'd call that. It looks like a standard wire crimp that's just been crimped onto this mesh. And I suppose ultimately that's an easier way because the, the alternate bands across, the alternate stripes, apart from the fact you could touch them with your fingers, um, they must have been quite hard to connect alternately. Um, it must have been quite a complex sort of arrangement and harder to manufacture. This, on the other hand, is just a, a series of layers uh, with the plastic meshes just sort of just fused in 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 between them so uh, let's uh, open it up so this thing takes two double a cells they last a modest length of time but keep in mind that this isn't used an awful lot it's well it's not run all the time it's it uh, just gets used in little bursts and if i put my other screwdriver there's my other screwdriver so see there's a screw up here which I think I should take out. Maybe I shouldn't have taken that one out. I'll soon find out. And two screws down here. This does seem to have a discharge circuit. Yeah, I had to take that one out. But uh, I'll just double check by grid and touching that. Um, so here's the circuit board. Let's see if I can get a zap off it. So it's got the button, um, the little, it's got a simple transistor oscillator these things usually have and then a voltage multiplier on the output. There's the discharge resistors. And I tell you what, I'm going to doodle this down um, and uh, we'll take a look at the schematic. Well for such a simple circuit that took me much longer to reverse engineer than expected. I did my usual, I, I took a photo of the back of the circuit board then fitted it down in earthen view and it drew on the components, but it was really hard making sense of the voltage multiplier because I thought it was going to be a straightforward voltage multiplier, and it really isn't. So here's how the circuitry breaks down. The battery supply comes in, it goes through this little clicky switch, and the first thing it hits is that resistor there, 330 ohm, and the LED, just so the LED lights when you press the button. Then the transformer has three windings. It's got the primary, which is turned on and off by the transistor. It's got the feedback winding, which turns the transistor on and off. And then it's got the secondary winding, which is the high voltage winding that then gets stepped up to make a high voltage output. And what's really odd, I, initially I, I was a bit perplexed because normally I'd expect to see the primary on this side of the transistor, but it's on the bottom, it's on the emitter between the emitter and the negative rail. So that's a plus three volts and that's, well, let's say negative or zero volts. And uh, normally that uh, wind would be there, but I'm not sure. There must be a reason they've used it there. It might, must be part of that particular oscillator configuration. The transistor itself is uh, rated for quite a high current. It's rated for over an amp and that's why they've used it here. But you couldn't really run this all the time. It would, it's just designed for brief zaps while you kill bugs and stuff like that and then turned off. If you kept it running all the time, that transistor would probably get quite hot. Uh, I should have checked that. I could still check it. Yes, okay, I will check it afterwards. Um, uh, so the feedback winding just as a resistor in and basically speaking when you turn the power on current flows through the feedback winding the resistor and the transistor starts turning on and then it induces more current uh, 
induces a, a voltage in the feedback winding which increases the current and until the transformer saturates and then the sort of the current will reduce and then it will the field in the coil will collapse and that will drive the transistor off and it will just be a basically cycle on off. The secondary is quite odd because, uh, as I say, I thought it was just going to be a, a straightforward voltage multiplier, but it's not. It's using two different voltage multiplier sections. The first one is just charging this capacitor up uh, to a negative voltage and the other one is the positive voltage and then boosting it up to increase the voltage. It's it's a bit complex. It took me a while to get my head around it and all the capacitors are different values. 100 picofarad, uh, 2.2 nanofarad and 22 nanofarts at 2 kilovolts. The two discharge resistors here and here. Oh, these are the, this is the little diode stack here. These are the two capacitors that are stepping the voltage up. And here's the big fat 22 nanofart 2 kilovolt capacitor. And these two resistors in here are the discharge resistors so that when you release the button, it doesn't hold the charge. The voltage in this uh, mesh will go down so that if someone picks it up afterwards and pokes their fingers through it, they don't get a zap. And they're quite high value. They're 22 uh, mega ohm in, in, par in series. So that's a total of 44 mega ohm. So yeah, it's it's an interesting circuit. Uh, ultra mass produced. I mean, this came from, you know, Poundland. I mean, the, you look at the components in this, and it's ridiculous that you know they can actually make stuff like this for a pound. But then, uh, how often do I actually see that? It's just one of these things. But uh, yeah, that's that's an interesting circuit. And now, I feel the need to run this for quite a time and monitor the temperature. That'll be back in a moment. It's a very resilient little transistor. I've just had it. Uh, typically, it will run up to about um, 50 degrees centigrade in normal operation, running off the batteries. I ran it off my bench power supply, and it was not a happy bunny. Uh, I think it may have caused the oscillator to stop running off the bench power supply. It showed about 700 milliamps. And the temperature of the transistor went up to 200 degrees centigrade, <laughs> which is quite high for a transistor. But normal operation with the batteries... Uh, with uh, less of a loss here. I guess it's just the length of the cables interfered with operation. Uh, it uh, typically goes somewhere in the region depending on the battery freshness of about uh, 45 to 50 degrees centigrade Celsius. That's okay. So, um, yes, and uh, even though I took it up to 200 degrees on the... Oh, I'm just going to have to tame that back down a wee bit. Even though I took it up to 200 degrees uh, Celsius or centigrade, on the, uh, when I had it in the bench power supply, it still recovered, so it's quite a robust little transistor. Yeah, it's an interesting circuit. Uh, has other applications, but really not designed for continuous operation. So um, good for little bursts of high voltage, though, and it's just basically as simple as they could possibly make the circuit.